Welcome back to Adobe Live on this wonderful rainy Wednesday morning slash afternoon. And welcome, of course, to our two guests for today. Today I'm joined by Nadine Kolotzi and Susi Fetter. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you today? <laughs> good. It's not that rainy here, actually. <laughs> not that rainy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, quite and, sunny. And of course, also... Today we are, as always, joined by our wonderful audience live on Behance. So if you're watching this anywhere else but on Behance, do make sure to come on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live. That's be.net slash Adobe Live. Come on over, join us there, join the live chat and say hi to our wonderful audience who today are joined by, among others, uh, Andreas and Angus and Connor and Fahad and Gareth and Jackie and Linda and Neil and Oliver and Sandrine and Sean and Stephen and Stuart and okay, I'm, I'm stop now. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us as always. And they're saying, I'm so excited for this. Yes, Jackie. I'm also very excited. <laughs> Tim kept quiet. Yes, this was a last minute decision for me to join, but I thought I can't have this dream without some gnarly questions from my end. Right, so bring it on, everybody. Ask those questions in the live chat. Hello to um, Martha also. Uh, some webcams are off center. <gasps> Hang on. There, that's better. <laughs> just kidding. We'll just keep it slightly off center just to annoy Gareth. All right. Okay, so today we will take a look at Adobe Aero, some uh, Illustrator some Mixamo, and even, I've heard, if we have the time, some After Effects. Oh, is that right? So what's what's the plan for today, Nadine? What are we doing? Yeah, so actually, uh, since we're both coming from illustration, our idea would be to show you some magic behind creation in 2D and 3D. And um, yeah, we will start actually with a simple drawing, and in the end, you will end up with a nice experience. So this is kind of what we are going for today. Very nice. So yes, they both will share uh, their screen today and they both will show something. And if you have watched the German session of the stream, which we had quite a while ago, you may or may not remember some of these um, images, assets and projects they will talk about. But perhaps we will even sneak in some pro tips today, which you haven't seen before. So without further ado, should we get started with uh, Susi on your side? What do you think? Sure, let's let's go. All right. Um, so we are on oh, Instagram right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both are like, uh, let's just show some stuff where we're coming from visually and mentally. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think Instagram is just both our most up to date thing. So uh, we're just going to show this. And um, there's lots of AR stuff there. For example, just gonna show you some random, some random art. This is in like actually a series of illustrations. Um, I do a lot of this like layered 2D art, which then is some something like 3D art, but not really. So just uh, to um, just for some people who may have joined us and never heard of AR before, AR. What does that even mean? What is AR? Um, yes, it's the digital layer of reality, what's physically right? there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically when you when you when you look through your phone camera or your iPad, whatever kind of camera, and um, you have some art sitting there. Actually, I was I was gonna look for the earliest thing I did. My first AR try, I think, was something like this. It was actually. So that was like with target tracking. So this Abracadabra was a target and then out of it. So cute. So essentially just to break it down, you're augmenting the reality, AR, augmented reality with your own art. And usually that's displayed in the real world using your camera and perhaps a certain app that we will uh, learn about later during this stream. So um, this exactly. is, this is yeah. what you did and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah for example so the yoga mat is already there the me where did you get a picture of me come on what 
<laughs> so, yeah, um, so there's lots of possibilities, exactly. And um, we're going to look into how to do this. Actually, um, what I'm going to share today is the workflow or first steps for this piece. Is there some? There's some. Oh. It was like birds that start chirping when you open the window shutters. <laughs> um, so we've also been looking into how, how this works, a little bit into how these how we make these like plants move, how those window shutters open because they actually open when you tap them. Yeah, all of these things. Wow, and, and that's so that's what we'll do today. Yes. <gasps> oh my god, that's <gasps> exciting. All right, so stay tuned, everybody, if you want to learn how to do that. We'll do exactly that today. But that's not all, right? We will do even a bit more. Because I, I, th I see that, uh, Nadine, you're here today. And uh, I know yes. that you will perhaps show us some, um, some uh, character work. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I will quickly take over. Um... Right. Hang on. Uh, just one second. There you go. Okay. Yeah. We can stop I... this. Oh. And Nadine will take over in just a second because we have to switch some things behind the scenes. Yeah. In Maybe, the meantime, uh, I will have a look at the chat while you do this. Oh, you're already there. Well, that's quick. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah, maybe uh, shortly about my background. Some of you might know me because I've been a creative resident 2019 uh, when it was still the old format of like one crowd exploring uh, projects that pitched uh, to Adobe. And I was actually coming from illustration and installation and I was asking to learn augmented reality. And this was 2018-19 when it was quite a new medium uh, and I was also beta tester for um, the Aero app, uh, the augmented reality app we will take a deeper look at today. So um, this is maybe nice to know. I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Yeah, so this is kind of where I was coming from. So it was about scissor cuts, very analog digital illustration in the mix. And uh, it was always a bit of a limit to me. So um, I was switching into installations, um, which I can show here uh, so this are really uh, our installative works uh, i did to kind of dive into your world That's like so i was like, cool <laughs> want to live in my drawings <laughs> yes right but it's not so easy because you need materials a budget a set then only the people who are around can visit it and i was always thinking if i could just have it with me and like invite people into my world and how to do this and augmented reality kind of turned that game for me because i think I was never a friend of VR where you shield yourself away in another dimension because I thought I want this magic to be part of my here and now experience and augmented reality is exactly doing that. So this was an absolute uh, go for me to explore what can be done. And those are my very first beginning uh, in Arrow. You see here November 2018. Um, it was quite limited what you can do. Still amazing though. Uh, and it's quite nice since it's a very new medium that you can kind of grow together with the technology. So there are a lot more possibilities how to um, have interactivity there, how you can embed sound. We will take a look at that later, how to work with proper 3D. But it was also nice for me to kind of be so close in the very early beginnings because um, when you started with augmented reality in 2018, you kind of had to build your own app. So this was a collaboration I was doing with uh, Gendo Ikari, a friend and programmer from Japan, because it was hard to get access to it. So it had this barrier of being something very techy. And I think the nice thing is that, especially with Arrow now, you can create, um, oops, sorry, you can create really uh, amazing uh, augmented reality experiences on a daily basis and uh, introduce the um, how you say, the viewer or the gamer into your world. So I was creating this place like this one. I was like, it shouldn't be only uh, experienceable, experienceable in the physical field. Uh, it would be great to have also digital components. And then I was starting to mix kind of my installations in the early beginning of Arrow here with um, like digital twins to the installations. And I think this was quite nice because uh, all of a sudden I had the power to yeah, control the physics, the sounds, the lighting, um, to take my shapes 
with me and also to bring them to life. And we will kind of take a look at how you can start with a simple drawing and then create a whole world or bring small characters to life. And this, this is so cool. And in the chat, they are already excited. And like, who can we do this in 82 minutes? They are really yeah. excited. Like, let's get this People started. Uh, we will actually do it. And we'll take a look at how easy it is because my background actually is not necessarily a, being a 3D artist, but I work with 3D a lot lately. So I would uh, show, show you some tips and tricks how, how to approach this new field, especially regarding 3D, if you're not coming from a um, 3D or techie background. And the project I want to share with you um, today also as kind of like a finished project is this one. It's called Springwalk uh, and it's also featured in the app so you can test it at home. It takes a bit of time to load because I kind of pulled out the maximum of the capacities of Arrow. <laughs> uh, but I want to show it to you on the Behance page. Um, there's a small video, it's playing with sound, but I might cut that, so. <laughs> Yeah, right. so you get a feeling of it. And the idea was that um, you have this world and the small uh, Sakura guide here, and he's kind of taking you into his world. So kind of this um, Alice in Wonderland moment where you explore a new reality. And I thought it's really fitting to this idea of alternative realities and augmented reality. So we will take a look into that, how I made this character, and I give some tips and tricks so you can play with that at home as well. All right. Well, that sounds like a grand plan for only 80, no, 78. I can't talk today for it's 78 hurry, minutes. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see all this and more. Um, and should we, should we just dive, oh, I know, should we dive oh. into it? Now you're big. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> should we dive into that? Um, now, when, where do we get started? Where do we begin? Yeah, we actually start to start with 2D maybe, so Zizi is taking over. All right, exactly. from 2D into 3D. And where do we start in 2D? Do we have a drawing? Where do we begin? Um, actually, um, let's start, let me just pull up the right thing. While you do this, I would just take a quick look at the chat and Kathleen, Kathleen says, reminds me of the original Willy Wonka film. Yes. And numbers are hard. Absolutely. Stuart says, go, go, go. Yes. And Nia says, amazing. What a world you live in. Right. Fab installations here. Um, <laughs> more after effects. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Melanie says, hello and happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you too, Melanie. And there we go go all right let's switch over to your screen and pew, here we go i see just, uh, yeah so just very briefly um before we get like right into um arrow <clears throat> um i'm usually so there's a thousand different ways i guess to approach this but the way i usually work is um to start with like a super traditional 2d artwork so i set my color scale i make it like a drawing of this and in the end I have my um, finished 2D illustration whoa, which whoa. I then... hold on hold on there for just one minute could, yeah so I did a drawing here and we have some coloring that but up but up this all took real time right you just you didn't just do this in five minutes no of course this takes time um but yeah, this is the fast version. Okay, <laughs> because <laughs> so, we this is yeah, not an like, illustration actually, this, yeah. is, this is all made in fresco, so uh -huh. I, I, I use this as a sketch and then it's basically like a coloring book. You just color it with the color scale you can set before. <laughs> you say this like it's easy. Yeah, you just color it. Yeah, Pff, no big deal. <laughs> There's actual work behind this and I do want to appreciate like how much this must have taken just to color, just to color this in. So great work. 
Thank you. Yeah, but by the way, this is this is made in fresco. And the way I've set this up in fresco was that, um, do you actually see my cursor? Yeah. Okay, so that actually these layers here that come in diagonally, which you're going to see in arrow two, um, I already set them up as single layers so that I can just import them um, straight into arrow. Mm -hmm. Because so, yeah, took well to layer them. In Fresco, and this was also a question in the chat, do you export out of Fresco as layers? Yes, you can. Um, either if you save to the cloud document, or of course you can export a PSD image, and this one has layers, all mm -hmm. the single layers. Yeah, there, there are actually two ways. You can export like this whole artwork as a PSD file, and then um, from Photoshop, you can um, actually export it again as a um, export for arrow that's an export option and then in arrow you can go in and like um, stretch your stre stretch the spacing of your layers so that's super convenient um, and like this this layering that you saw before which I'm going to show you in a second um, this happens then pretty automatically uh, I tend to do it by hand, so import. Um, I'm I'm usually importing um, all layers on on their own um, because I want to animate them. the The downside of importing from Photoshop is like you have this the stretch effect. You have super fast, but then you you, you don't have access to the single layer. So if you want to manipulate them in any way, you want to um, import them each one on their own. All right, so just to recap, you can export it as single layers, all the single layers, all the single layers. If you like it better, put a link on it. Uh, no, sorry about that. Um, so you have to make sure to draw every element on its own layer, like all the ferns, the plants, the sun, the sky, the person, right? That's all in yeah. a separate layer. And then you can export that and fresco, no, not fresco, um, Arrow. Arrow, yes, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Arrow will understand those layers and you can space them out automatically so you don't have to reposition them, every single one of them, as long as the layering is, of course, correct. Right? Exactly. All right, exactly. okay, now I, now I can follow you. All right, okay. So where are we now in the process? We now have exported uh, our um, illustration as a layer document. What do we do now? Oh, there you are. Now. You have to give me a warning if you switch screens. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be very big. <laughs> um, now we can actually go straight into arrow. I'm oh. gonna. All right. I'm I'm clicking my arrow now. Warning, warning. We're waiting. <laughs> and you use it on your iPad, right? Because there's also a desktop uh, app, uh, which is usable, and. Yeah. yeah so and I'm also just, I just shoved my computer to the side in order to make space for my iPad in front of me now. Hang on. Which we will see in just a moment. And meanwhile, in the chat, don't forget to fill in the void space. But look, oh, it will look horrible. Okay, interesting. And um, okay. It's true. So, wisdom. Um, do you see my arrow yes. now? Here we are. <laughs> We're on your okay. iPad in Adobe Arrow. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll just show you the how the, the finished thing is set up technically. If you could just move your mouse a bit off the screen, I think it's still on. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So now, fre uh, Fresco, <laughs> Arrow will ask you to scan the area. To get so get, can get a plane, and if you have one of the um, newest iPads that has a lidar scanner in it, it will even work uh, faster than this. Mm -hmm. And it already has positioned one. Yep, you can. Oh, yeah, basically, what happened is um, my iPad de detected uh, the table in front of me. It, it should have also detected the wall behind me, but never mind. Um, and now I'm in editing mode for my experience. And I'm just gonna stand up and walk behind it so that you see how this actually looks behind. So, come on. And here we can see Susie Fetter. She's standing up, yes, live and in color. She's moving the iPad. This is very so exciting. You see the layers. 
Oops, do you still hear me? No, I'm walking away. Yeah, it's a bit far away. That's why I'm commenting. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay quiet for a second. All right. So what she's doing is, um, of course, since you have the iPad, you can actually take it and walk around, and you can look at it from all sides and angles. And uh, here you go. Oops, I need to see my my wonderful pile of cables. And um, what you might have noticed, uh, what what uh, someone in the chat said as well is you want to you you want to make those layers like you want to give them some some uh, flesh around them so that um they don't you don't see the edges everywhere so basically for this experience i'm going to go into preview um, mode now. just quickly i think there might be a delay on your ipad can we quickly i know that Troubleshooting yeah. live on stream. Um, can I will stop your share again? And when you share it again, there should be like a checkbox optimized for video clips. If you can check that when you share your iPad screen, oh, maybe, maybe we can try that. True. So um, where do I see this checkbox? You share your screen, and there on the box, there should be like a checkbox share um, optimized for video or full screen. If you see that live stream yeah. troubleshooting, yes, click that and then you can just share it again. And hopefully that should be a bit smoother than the slideshow we just had. Usually it's helping a lot. Like the magic button everyone needs. <laughs> <laughs> just optimize everything, please. Yes, thanks. Make All right, work. okay. Take two. Ta -da. Okay, I think there are some, <laughs> you have some, just give it a second. There we go. You have, oh, that's much better. You have some windows on your um, screen. If you could just move them because they're like uh, obstructing a bit. I think it's the toolbar you have. Just um, troubleshooting. It looks weird screen. because I don't see it. Interesting. I All see right. that it's on your screen, but it's not on mine. Well, but we're just going to pretend like it's not there. Oh, no, it's Zoom. Hang on. It's actually Zoom. <coughs> I mean, the app now? we're using to share your screen. <coughs> Is it gone now? Uh, no, no, that's we better. Right. Okay. We'll just ignore it. All right. Okay. If you just add a bit higher, then uh, it's perfect, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so now there is a delay again. <laughs> oh, no. But at least it's smooth. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> oh, but you can already got a, a glimpse of the illustration in the back. I think that's really nice that you can see through the window and there is something already moving. Ah, now it's working. Also let's okay. let's just continue. Let's just it, it won't get better if we just wait any more. All right. So let's now you see. have um, added your work to your desk, and you can move yeah. your iPad around to have a look. And it is it already three D? I hear some noise already. Where is that coming yeah, from? That was the that was the sound I included in um, an arrow, uh -huh. and I'm going to show you how that works. So what we can do now? I'm just gonna. Okay, so there is the, the delay is about three minutes. What? <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, shall I just quickly try the cable version again? I mean, while we're here, why not? <laughs> okay. Let's just try it because I'm, I'm getting confused myself when I'm when there is such a big delay. So a quick ukulele break. Yeah, perfect. That's a bright idea. She has Windows on her iPad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, birds. Um, noise, yes, birds singing. That's what I was talking about. And also... Oh, Alex, welcome to the chat. I've only no. seen this made with 3D objects or drawings. A photo composite would work as well. Um, yes, Sean, of course. Anything really that has layers, you can bring into Adobe Arrow on the iPad. And that shouldn't be an issue at all. Actually, you could also do combinations and be like, maybe this part will be a 2D layered, kind of like a stage background. Then you have some 3D assets, uh, which might be the interactive parts. So you can really be super playful with it, actually. And use it also for yeah, sketching or really putting scenes together, not only to create experiences per se. So I think it's quite nice to also use it as a composition tool in general. And not many people are uh, exploring in that field, actually. Everyone is quite focused on, um, yeah, maybe first steps and simple animations. But I think that there is like a huge 
um, huge new potential to uh, to discover. All right. Okay. So I think now I can see the iPad, but there are some windows over that. I think you can just move the preview window a bit to the right. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So is the delay better now? Um, no? Let me try. Yes, it, it, it yeah, looks better. All right. Okay. okay. Take three. I do we live. So, um, so as I said, let's start a new project. Um, going through some of um, the steps to set this up. Um, so what we want to do is uh, on the bottom left create new project, and then um, basically the same thing that uh, happened before in editing mode is Adobe or uh, Arrow is looking for surfaces to pin the experience to. So I could either choose the wall or the table. And for convenience, I'm going to choose a table. And um, now we can start adding assets. Mm -hmm. All right. The delay is growing, but... <laughs> Don't go it. Just, just ignore it. <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to do is I click the little plus button on the lower left. Which of yours we'll see in a moment. Just continue. <laughs> this is really weird. Just, see, just, just, just pretend like nothing happens. We just we just see it in a moment. It's all right. There you go. Ah, there it comes. Um, and then I go into Creative Cloud Assets. And from there, I'm going to um, pick some assets. So here I have lots of stuff that's um, that's in my experience, and I'm just gonna start with maybe. Well, what do we want to start? With? Maybe the window shutters. There you go. And one thing that's 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 important um, because here we already have like a bit of a special animation case. You see that I've set this file up in a way that um, that the window shutter is to the left of the um, of the picture. So this is a square and like the this the edge is in the middle. And I'm gonna show you in a second why I did that. Oh I can see. So um these are all just normal flat images, uh, PNGs with uh, transparency already baked in. Exactly. All right. So I just like I can now like drag this around and do with it with whatever I want. Um, there we go. Delay, delay. <laughs> and I'm just gonna <laughs> add the second, the second window shutter too, real quick. There we go. I think it's quite nice that your um, daily surrounding becomes your canvas and you can really use it as a space to put everything together. That's actually super nice, I think. Yeah. And you don't see that, but I'm really just dragging around those those assets with my finger. So um, it's, it's super easy to use. So um, I'm going to leave out the wall for now, but um, what I want to do, like one simple animation, what you saw in the beginning is that those window shutters open when you tap them. Um, and and this... that's just one really interesting thing. Um, you can add interactions, animations to uh, Adobe Arrow. And this also ties in to a question I just saw. How can people later view those experiences? Do they need Arrow or how does that work? That's a very good question. Um, they need the like the the phone app, the viewer, to just um, to view it. <laughs> so what you usually do is like you share a QR code or a link or something. They'll open the Arrow app, and um, then you can place the experience anywhere. But you do need the Arrow app. But it's part of the cloud. So if you're a subscriber, um, you already have it all the time, and you just didn't use it yet. Exactly. All so, right. so um, and just uh, FYI, I do happen to have an Adobe Aero uh, QR code right here. Look at that. That is. Mm -hmm. And Nadine, you may or may not know this one. So um, I will show this one later during the stream. And perhaps some of is you it? can find out where this QR code goes to. Hmm. 
interesting. <laughs> so get your phones ready. Download uh, Adobe Aero right now. Okay, back to you. Sorry about that. Okay, um, so I want this window shutter to open when I tap it. And actually what I also want is that the birds start chirping once I open it. Um, so I'm gonna do both um, with this bottom bar. In the middle, you see this behavior tab. Um, clicking that, you're gonna see that in probably five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, I'm clicking that. Uh, and then I add a trigger. Um, and then I have different options. I can say I want the um, I want the action to happen when I start, when I tap, or when I enter proximity. Um, I do well, oops, I do want it to start when I tap. And then this next window opens. Um, it says, okay, what do you want to do now? So I tap on action, and then I have a whole lot of things that I can choose from, like all kinds of animations, and they look simple, but you can actually do pretty sophisticated stuff with them. Um, what I want to do um, for the window shutter to open is I want it to rotate. And you get, you get this sort of flow chart where you have the different actions, what is going to happen. And now we can see the actions like play animation, play audio and so on. And these, some of them are really quite complex, actually. Very interesting. Mm. I think in general to work with audio is like a big uh, game changer because you can have really a multi-sensory experience coming from only a drawing. And I think this is really embracing the immersiveness a lot. So um, I think I would always try to include some music or sounds. It makes it so much more lively and authentic. If I build an AR extension onto my property, would it add value to if I sell the house? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only if they use arrow. Okay. So in the meanwhile, I I moved on. <laughs> Sorry. Creating this. Yeah, no, but there because of the delay, it's going to show up in a couple of oh, okay. seconds anyway. So um, as I said, I want this to rotate, and obviously this is the wrong direction. I always have to test it. But yeah, so you can manipulate the um, the degree, and then like if you click. On the top right, this little play button, you can test your animation. Um, I'm happy with that. So I click the little check mark. And um, the next thing I want to do, we're going to test this in a second, but the next thing I want to do is add the sound. And that's equally easy. And that's like, like as um, as Nadine said, this is, this is pretty cool in the game changer. So, um, under, so it's still showing the wrong window, but like under this rotation action, I have this little plus button. I'm gonna wait until this shows up. Mm -hmm. There, so I just tap the plus button. Then this, um, the all the interactions that I can do show up again. And I tap play audio. So you can basically add more than one um, action yes. to a, to a tr trigger. And that's yeah, and that's really crucial to know. Um, you can add multiple option, uh, multiple actions, either to happen at the same time or to have to happen like like kind of a chain reaction. You can say first rotate and then play audio and then start dancing and then wait and then do everything from the beginning so you can like do actually really complex um um chains of things and nadine is actually going to talk about it later more mm -hmm. um so now we're in this little audio menu and now it basically just asks me like what do you want to do which audio do you want to play um so i go into my um, cloud files again. Okay, so you don't have to use any presets. You can uh, import your very own audio files. Exactly. So I had my um, I had my audio file that I've downloaded from um, just an audio sample page, and you can just import that the same way you import an, uh, an image asset. 
What's there are also this, starter um, sounds, which are quite nice. So there is a small library um, to play with in the beginning in Arrow. Oh, very cool. And what was this ambient sound um, switch you saw? Um, that was just that was the audio file that I um, that I imported. Yeah, what? Well, oh, this ambient sound. Oh, yes. Okay. It's still on the. I think that's. I'm, I'm never using this to be honest. Is it that surroundings? Nadine, do you know? Yeah, ambient sound means that it's kind of an overall uh, sound you have for the whole scene. So it could be, for example, waves of an ocean, and then you have particular sounds attached to objects. For example, you could have an ocean as an ambient sound, which is kind of the overall sound. And then if you add, uh, for example, a creaking, squeaking of the doors to the object, um, this uh, will also be louder or less loud if you approach it. So it's, um, how you say, baked into the object. And the other one is more like a, a overall spatial uh, ambient sound. And it's also a bit uh, more silent, I think. All right. OK, awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I just tapped the preview button. Again, it's going to take a couple of seconds to show. Um, but now I've set up these interactions and um, I can always switch between edit and preview mode to test things or like especially interactions. In preview mode, I can see if they actually work. Um, and I'm going to add and test it already. <laughs> it does work. You might hear the sound. <laughs> But you don't see the audio. So let's wait for a second for this to show up. <laughs> it's really tricky to, to, there you go. So I've switched to preview mode. Now I'm tapping the, the shutter. Also, you can take photos and videos of your experience and share those even with those um, who don't have the app or the um, device ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And also on the corner, the small export file, there you can also export your experience as QR code, like the secret code. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's how you get that. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing. This is how you how you animate and like trigger sound within Arrow. But there is another thing um, that's super powerful and uh, interesting to do in Arrow, which is importing actual um, 2D animation. And if we have time in the end, this is what Tim mentioned in the beginning, um, we can show you how to prep your files to import them to Arrow. Um, I'm going to use a file that I've already prepared. So I'm actually going to go into my creative file, creative cloud files again. Yeah, and this ties into a question that Stuart just asked. Are there many import file options? So which files does Arrow know how to use? Do you happen to know which ones mm -hmm. are supported? Yeah, that really depends on uh, what what you want to do. Like for 2D, it's only, I think, JPEGs and PNG files. And then um, for animation, and that's the basically the trick about it, for animation, you, you um, export your animation file as a PNG sequence. Um, and that sequence that might be like 200 pictures then, don't be afraid of that. Uh, just try to keep the file size low. Um, that PNG sequence, now I'm in the menu. Uh, yeah, that PNG sequence, you, you have to zip as a zip file. And this zip file, um, as unusable as it looks, is the, the what makes the magic happen in Arrow. So let me find... And maybe for 3D, uh, you can import FBX, GLD, GLTF files. So you can work with 3D assets or 3D assets uh, which have a baked-in animation already. And we will take a look at that also later. Nice. And Emma is joining us. Oh. Hi, Emma. Oh. I just clicked import PNG file, uh, zip file. 
And there we have it. It actually shows up as a picture. Yes, there is almost zero delay now. I'm going <laughs> to take delay. advantage of that. Um, so <laughs> this lady should actually be behind the shutters, as you saw in the original experience. And that's why I'm going to just um, blend out the shutters for the time being. You do that with this like little panel at the bottom right. That was a nice German there, blend out. <laughs> Yes, you can <laughs> hide them. Sorry, <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Um, and now you have your your PNG sequence as a still image. This doesn't work automatically as an animation. So what you got to do is you have to go into behaviors again. Say trigger. This time I'm stu I'm choosing start as a trigger. There there it is again. Our delay. So, um, and, and choosing start as a trigger. And now my action is not play animation, but play images. Gonna wait a second for that to show up so that you can see. There it is. I tap play images. And then I have a couple of options to choose from. So, I can trim it if I like, I can manipulate the speed. I can say how many times I want to play it, if that's relevant to me. I can also set a delay, which is super useful. And I can say, um, play it back and forth. Well, that's cool. Which really helps with like keeping animation files small, because if you have, for example, the plans that I have in my, anima uh, in my experience, if you just want them to wiggle back and forth, you can either do that within Arrow, but if you're doing it with, um, with a PNG sequence, you can just basically have one direction and like have it repeat over and over again. Also, oh, a bit like the ping pong animation. In exactly. The other apps exactly. that I've never heard of. <clears throat> okay. Um, and now you can go and test it, and with this like little play yeah. button up here. Just pretend like nothing happened. Just continue gonna play in a second or five minutes i swear <laughs> it's all right just just continue, just continue there it is um yeah and this is how you this is how you um use imported animations um something important to know is and that that counts for both png for png jpeg and jpeg files and also those zipped PNG sequences. Um, you want to keep your file size, the file size of your arrow file as low as possible. So ideally below 50 megabytes. Um, I've also made some experiences with like 200 megabyte and somehow got them to work, but I don't recommend that. Um, because remember, um, um, since people are watching this on their phones and tablets, they will have to download this over Wi-Fi. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that, and also, it it might just it take it might take forever, and it might get compressed in a weird way. So that's just try to keep it below fifty MB. And also for like single image assets, um, you want to keep them below two hundred pixels in height or width. Um, that also helps to to get around any kind of compression that Arrow does. Mm -hmm. And just because um, I see um, short, a discussion in the chat about QR codes, um, yes, you need to have Arrow installed for it to automatically open the scene, and we will show the code at the end of the stream again. Um, and in the iPhone, you can just use your camera, uh, just oh, go to your iPhone, open the camera, and it will automatically, oh, look at that, um, detect QR codes on Android, you may need a separate app for that. Like Google Lens, I think, can do that. But on iPhone, just use a camera. All right. Okay, back to you. <laughs> okay, so um, since since I'm not going to build this whole experience here, I'm, I'm stopping with, the, um, with this one and uh, I'm not going to add all the plants and all the layers, but something... Um, Something interesting about the workflow, maybe, um, is how to set up the layers. So there are actually two ways. Uh, one is, as I showed you before, to just like really drag, drag the layers around with your fingers. And if you don't want to work super exactly, that's totally fine. 
but you can also um, use the move, rotate and scale um, tabs at the bottom. So if you like really work as exact as uh, like one millimeter less or more, then you want to use these and like use either the arrows, which I'm doing right now, you just don't see it. There we go. <laughs> either the arrows to move your, your object around or even use um, the input field. Oh. And yeah, that's it. There you see them. There we Beautiful. go. And these are yeah. really used, uh, you're used to them if you already um, have opened any other 3D applications. They're the classic XYZ um, gizmo tool thing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. All right. Also in 3D, uh, we will uh, work with those a lot. <gasps> and Exciting. Good. Yes. All right. Okay. So now we have yeah. to, now we've inserted our animation into the uh, scene. What's next? Um, what's next is build out the whole experience with all I don't know what forty layers, <laughs> and, and if you're happy with it, um, then you can click on that little share button at the top right. And then you have different sharing options. So you can like either record a video, share a link, share a QR code, share it on Behance, or actually export the working file. Very cool. All right. Okay. Just sorry, I had to do. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> because people are still asking, like, can we see that QR code again? Like, yes, at the end. Not right In now. You have to focus on the screen right now. Okay. But in general, it would be super nice if you play with it at home. I think uh, also uh, Susie's experience is in the arrow preview, I think. So if you play around with it, send us some recordings or tag us um, uh, on our Instagrams. We always love to see you engage with it. And I think especially with augmented reality, it's nice how the people make it their own. Because if you play it in your garden, in a, I don't know, futuristic building it gets like such a different atmosphere to it so it's always great to see it in in different surroundings i think so we're excited to see your recordings later all right yeah. okay so now i see you uh, about to export your um project and how can you export yeah. your work that's what i yeah that's what i did five minutes ago <laughs> so talk about that um the the yeah so the easiest way is to like tap this share a link um uh option uh -huh. and yeah, you can create a link you can also i think you can create a qr code from there not i didn't try it no it's a more pretty one yeah uh, link. okay it's generating a link yeah so if you click that you can generate a link and you can also download the qr code very cool. And you can share that code just like we'll at the end of the stream, Gareth. And uh, it's great to see you curious about it. Yeah. Well, so am I. Who knows what's behind that QR code? We'll never know. I don't know it. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Okay. And I think hopefully that will come up in just a second. No. Okay. All right. Just imagine a QR Damn code. Damn you, delay. Yeah. Imagine, imagine tapping share and clicking on the Nadine, QR you code and then it shows up. You don't have to have an iPad ready, Nadine, where you can I show that, I, perhaps? I do. Yeah, but I will show also some of it later. Um, anyways. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> share code. Link. There it is. Ah, there it is. All right. No okay. And I'll that's like the QR code. And oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Well, now that we have the QR code, what will we do now in the stream? Because we only have about 40 minutes left. Yeah, yeah I would like hand over straight to Nadine to like all show right. all the magic in 3D. Let's go over to Nadine. I'll just stop that real quick. Here we go. And handing and it over. I'm in the meantime, fine. I will look at the chat. Why is the screen jiggling so much? Yes, because she's holding the ipad in her hand that's why all right yeah so but i think now i will do a turbo course for you guys um so you could 
have your own moving characters in a few minutes. And we start with uh, our home illustrator, where we all come from. <laughs> in a way. Um, and as you can see, we start with simple drawings. I put like a background here. So those are um, just faces I was um, painting and some patterns we might use. And important is here that they have no background. So those are transparent PNGs. It could be anything, but we will be working with faces and patterns because we want to create a cool um, small character. So this is an illustrator. I think you can all start on your assets at home so we can uh, kind of mix and match that. And we will jump over into dimension. Or even illustrator on the iPad. <gasps> yeah, you can do it mobile. So, right. Okay. And Sorry. with dimension, I think this is kind of where most of the magic happens for me together with arrow. So this is a really strong combo. I'm using on a daily basis. And Dimension is actually built more for mockups. For example, if you're a product designer, you want to show your package design in different um, ways, in different settings with different labels on it. But since I'm not necessarily coming from a 3D classical background, I used it or I misused it, took it over um, to create my 3D assets. And as you can see here, it's a quite familiar menu. So here you have the starter assets. Uh, we have things here like um, models, so those are objects, and they're all in the library already, so you have them at home. You can also choose materials, which is super nice. I love to dive into materials, and also some, things like lighting. So it's really um, a tool to create a whole scene, and the graphics are super crisp. And the nice thing in my part here is that I would like to show you how to create your characters without proper 3D modeling, but 3D combinations. Uh, and actually, if you um, start modeling and you're like, oh, but actually I don't find a model or a thing I can work with, you can quickly head over to, let me see, stock, because there is a huge collection of actually also free 3D assets, materials and lightings you can choose. You can also, of course, license um, something particular if you're very keen on, okay, I need this kind of particular dinosaur for the scene. You might have to license it, but if it's something more general or if it's featured, uh, there is an amazing library of um, also free 3D assets you can import directly into your dim uh, dimension and library. Quickly, before yeah. anybody um, says something like, ooh, I can only use Adobe Stock. No, of course not. You can also use uh, mm -hmm. the other supported file formats. However, uh, models from Adobe Stock are already optimized yeah. for Adobe Dimension, so they will work right away with no preparation. So that's mm -hmm. one big advantage. And I'm keeping keep talking because she's frozen. Oh, mm -hmm. back. Hello. Your camera's frozen, I but am. your screen is moving. Oh, hello. I'm frozen. No. Let it go. Ooh. Just continue. Okay. Today is interesting. It's all right. <laughs> Um, At least I'm not the only. I will just restart. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah? Um, okay, Adobe awesome. Dimension is a bit too much. So here for I actually this stream it's just overwhelming. It's all right. Things happen. Here we go. Okay. Uh, let me just quickly switch over. There we are. Okay. Cool. Now we can see Adobe Live Spring Walk. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. For some reason, Susie and me, we both had issues. Maybe it's a Zoom thing. Um, we're a bit caught up here, but thank you for still staying tuned. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, 3D is difficult and streaming 3D apps is even diffi more Probably difficult, even for the best machines. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's... Uh, still on hold here. I don't know if you can see it. Well, we um, can see the spring walk. Yeah, it makes some uh, changes. Maybe I have to, maybe switch to the iPad and we try it. I try to show it there. I think it makes more sense right. here. Let's try it on the iPad. We do have a backup yeah. plan, for po folks. We try it. <laughs> we, try it. we try it all. Um, oh, no. So we will skip the dimension part, but since... Um, but if you want to learn more about that, we do happen to have uh, a keynote 
back from off, right? Where you and Rufus were showing some amazing projects in Adobe yeah. uh, Dimension Arrow. So I perhaps if I can find the link, I can share that later. I'm not sure if we can still watch that. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure, but if I can find it, um, I'll make sure to share it. And in there, you can see even more of uh, Nadine's work. All right. Yeah. So, so should we give it a try on the iPad? You should give it a try. We All should right. I mean, um, what's what's Toulouse, honestly? And Toulouse is a place in France. Okay. So landscape, uh, please. You can see that. Yep. There we go. Whew, no. That's working. Yeah. So there, uh, there is some. You can really rely on Arrow, actually. <laughs> So what you see here is, is actually the character I wanted to build with you. And as you can see, uh, he looks quite cute. And um, he's made completely from starter assets. So I, the idea is you can build this person or this character without any 3D knowledge. So the face you can see here is the illustration. We've been drawing an illustrator. And I placed it on a droplet. And then I use basic shapes like, for example, the legs. Those are trees like pine trees from the starter asset so you can really mix and match everything from the library and bring it together to one character and with this one actually uh it's doing the t-pose maybe you know the t-pose so mm -hmm. it's kind of what he's doing there and you need that for mixamo and mixamo actually let me see if i can send that to airdrop it to my ipad quickly Uh, Nixamo is actually kind of like a small sister of um, it's like a small sister of uh, the um, in the CC overview uh, CC world and you can actually animate all the characters which are in T-pose like this one and it's important that you uh, export this character um, as FBX with skin and then all the animations without skin and we'll take a look how this looks you have to sign in of course oh hang on mm -hmm. there you go we don't need to see your login process <laughs> that's not part yeah, of the anyways, fun anyways if you have the character um you can actually give it any animation you want and i told this one uh to dance uh if it's tapped so it looks quite cute dancing and maybe complaining so like us today he's a bit like <laughs> so um know. Just as a reminder, on Mixamo, um, you can not cannot only uh, record your uh, no, not record. You can not only customize or create characters that are already there. You can also um, animate them. It has a ton, tons and tons of presets and animations in there, where you can use them uh, to, you know, um, anim <laughs> You can use animations to animate your characters. <laughs> wow, oh. amazing. And actually, no, but if you can also actually download characters if you don't want to build one your own. And you can also um, take idols, like, um, for example, like a slight movement which enhances the whole scene. And so with this one, if you go to behaviors, you go to play animation. And this is our Tipo Star Boy. You can see it here. And then I chose Silly Dancing because this is what I downloaded for Mixamo. And then if Sweet. I play... Then uh, I already have my scene as when I tap it, sorry, uh, that it should just start to dance. And I think this is quite nice, actually, that you start with a drawing and you end up with an animated character. It's a bit of sad that I couldn't show you uh, how he's built in um, Dimension, because this is the most fun to kind of think of, oh, okay, maybe the legs, I can make a closer look. Like, those are really pine trees, and I um, stretched uh -huh. them, so they look super long. And the body, this is actually a star for his kind of like a punk uh, belt. And also the hands, they are stars. So, um, well, are they, are those all um, default shapes in dimension? Yeah, all, it's all default in well. dimension. All the material is there. So everyone can build exactly this character and you can add your own face. And well, I tell think you this what, is quite, I huh? happen to have dimension just ready. You know, that is. So, so if here. if if we are brave, we okay. could um, you could guide me through dimension and mix them. I have mix them all just ready here. 
if you want to do that. Yeah, let's do it. All okay. right. Let's, Oof, let's do it. Okay. Uh, yep, you can stop yours, and I will um, go over to my screen. Oh God, this is so janky. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. Let's go over to dimension. All right. Yeah. Okay, Perfect. so now we're in dimension. I will create a new scene. Yes. Here we are, and let's just zoom in a bit using the zoom key. It's very tiny. Why is it so tiny? Even I, oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Whew. Um, I have my starter assets on the left. And where yeah. do I begin? What I need? We start with a bubble. So you take the sphere. Yep. And if you click on it, here it is. And then we go to material, which is the second. Uh, it's like on oh, yeah. the uh, or on the bottom. You can also find the materials. And we go to substance materials a little bit. Yeah. And to the red one. Uh, this I one? I really like that one. Yeah. Just All click right, it. okay, I just click it. Yep, there you go. Yeah, then it has the texture, and now we can pull it up a little bit just uh -huh. so that it's floating like a little bit high up because this will be the head. So, all the way up. All right, here we go. Like this. Perfect. And now we go back to the starter assets uh, yep. to the object. Mm -hmm. And I think as a belly, we will choose, I can't really read it, but. Um, uh, like this one, yeah. This one. All right. Okay. Yes. Yep. And just as a belly and smaller. Uh, yep. Uh, you can scale, can scale it down like this. Perfect. Pull it up. And actually, if you break the chain and the scaling, you can kind of tear it a little bit. So you can't really touch the polygons, but you can really change the shape. Yeah. But we will make it flat, maybe. Flat. Okay. Flat. Even flatter. It's but like me also, after a diet. Here we go. No, kind of like this. Oh, okay. I see. All right. Okay. Whoop. Here we go. Yeah. And then we pull it up. Uh, more up, up, like at the throat. Whoop. Yeah. Perfect. And now we take another sphere yep. for the belly. You can also click it and it will come directly to the zero point. Oh, okay. Smaller. Yeah. Smaller, smaller. And underneath it. Why is your dimension so smooth? I'm because so I have a Windows machine. Ooh, shots fired. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's my <Mic drop. laughs> okay. All right. I actually got a new PC PC, but I haven't started yet. Yeah. Oh, look, but my that's nice. not on point. It has, it has a, a little butt that's cute. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we go all the way down in the objects. Yeah. And there should be a tree pine somewhere. Oh, I can also search. And how about that? Tree. Uh, Oh, it's not there. It looks like it's not installed. Perhaps I would have okay. to look on Adobe Stock, but for now, I suppose we can yeah. cheat a bit and just use a pipe and make it a bit. Yeah, you, you can make it also slimmer. If you look at the uh, left side, you can also change the radius, I think, from the mm -hmm. pipe. Oh, oh, or like I can it. just scale it up. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. well, this you is... can do a lot here already. And maybe we duplicate it. So we have two. This is the um, finest model I have ever created. It's cute, isn't it? Um, okay, and then we take two capsules to kind of form yeah. a feet. One should be straight and one should be 90 degrees to it. Okay. Like this, yeah. And then double and 90 degrees. And then put it back and a bit more high. Yep, a bit further up. Sure thing. Yes. That's it. Uh, so this will be the shoe, and we can um, uh, like take this one in the material also red. Material also, red. Maybe maybe golden. Maybe golden would be better actually. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, nice. No. Scale it uniformly. I group them by the way, so I can move them all at once. Yeah, okay. we should duplicate it. Uh, actually. Well, that's a bit small. <laughs> Bigger, bigger, bigger. I you... think big feet are cool, even bit bigger. All right. Bigger, yeah. You're the boss. Okay. Yeah. Downstairs. And of course, I will can I can move all the things uh, further bit up after I've placed them. Okay. Here we go. So. Now so... everything a bit up. Oh, this is somehow so satisfying to watch. Oh, that <laughs> yeah, that's the sad thing. It's so nice to watch it. I would have loved to show you. Ah. All right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, now we go back to the objects. Yeah. 
and we take the star. The star, here we go. And, and I we guess we can rotate like, it. Yeah, on the belly. I hold the... shift to constrain it only to the degrees that I want. And I uh, guess I will move it up. Oh, like this, yeah. It should look like a punk uh, punk person, yeah. A, a punk person? Yeah, it looks <laughs> cute. Um, <laughs> Well, All right. well, in that case, if it's supposed to look like a <laughs> fun person, hello. Yeah, nice. Yeah, no, that was perfect, actually. Can you put it back? One second. I just, I thought maybe, uh, like, uh... oh, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. Looks awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, then um, maybe we could uh, go by trying the hands with. Uh, let me quickly take a look downstairs. There are like the very last assets. It's kind of like this one. Banana. Yeah. Like this is, no, next to it. Oh, abstract shapes. Yeah. And then we choose, they're grouped. So you have to degroup it. Oh. And then okay. we take only one of the strokes. Maybe so the last one the uh, just, uh, half round one the half this one no this one uh, the first one yeah i think oh, okay oh no the second one i think the second one would be better this one yeah this one okay yeah and, and then um we take this just get rid of them the and i ungroup them by selecting the group and uh, doing command or control shift g to ungroup right now what we do with this Okay, so this will be the arm. So we place it uh, where the arm should come out of the. Okay, thingy. I just make it a bit thicker. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh, now it's a very wavy arm. It should be wavy. It's good, but okay. it can be even thicker. So maybe even thicker. Even, okay. Oh yeah, super thick. Ooh, okay, all right. More, more. Do you know what? Yeah. And as Ooh. you can see, you can do a lot with that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more equal, like the curve is too extruded. So we have to bend it. Ooh. Yes. Oh, that's better. All right. Okay. And then if, if it's flat, we can like pull it a little bit, like that it's more, it has more surface. Yeah, I mean, it's fine for now, honestly. <laughs> we don't want to okay. lose too much time. I, I guess I will right. duplicate that and. Yeah. Ooh. Like this. And maybe we just take uh, from the, um, if we go back to the material. Yeah. Uh, we could, um, maybe we make the legs red and also the arms. So everything's kind of the skin color of red. All so right. We understand that this is like, and the belly should be jeans. Jeans, belly, denim. Here we go. Yes. I and would then the, a bit rougher and a bit more white lines, please. And yeah. there you go. And okay. The stars should be chrome. Chrome, okay. Yeah, Let's see if right. I have chrome ready. I have silver. Maybe. Silver is okay. No, I want to use chrome or metal. Ooh. Okay, no, not metal the belly. Is, oh. for, for the star, yeah. Here we go. Great. Oh. And then <laughs> for the hair, I think we should use black marble. <laughs> of course, yes, right. And, uh, um, let's see if I have black marble. Let's downstairs. search for yeah. that. A bit down, but it was there just a bit. Down. Uh, I have vein marble. Yeah, that's the correct one. Uh, okay, all right. Um, so it looks great. I think that those are good hairs, and maybe for the um, throat thingy, I think yeah, um, also gold. Gold would be good. G gold. Oh, yeah, obviously. Let's yeah, see, we and brass. We have oh more brass. Close enough, yeah, I guess. But bra um, brass is, or damage clean gold. Breath. Here we go. That's also awesome. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. I will quickly send you actually the face we will be using so um, that we can take a look at that because this is quite nice actually. Um, no, you want, I will do a fire face. There we go. Yes, stand on, please. All right, so I sent you the huh? PNG. You have to check if you have them. Wait, where did you send it? <laughs> As an uh, email. Oh, go dear. Okay, all right. 
Let's uh, move. This is really a, maybe a premiere, so we try like remotely create here. Um, sorry for the circumstances. I mean, wouldn't again. it be great if we had some kind of um, creative cloud library where we could uh, share assets? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Because now, it's, like this old workflow, now I have to know which email you've used. Oh no, okay. But I can right, do it. But then I have to load dimension and check if that is working. Which email did you use? Didn't, I'm not seeing anything. Um, my Adobe or my personal one? one? Yeah, I think your Adobe one. Okay, hang on. No, Same. sorry about that. Oh, there we go. I have it. Yes, all right. Yeah. Whew. Now I just have to figure out how I can... Can I just drag it over? Let's just find out quickly. Yeah. Uh, the pattern is just to drag on the belly and the face on the face, and then we should be good. Well, it's easier said than done. How in the world do I download this from here in Outlook? Oh, God. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, can I just take a screenshot? Yeah. Yeah, but you have to... Let's find out. To make a PNG out of it. Yeah, I can do that. I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a pro. I can do that. <laughs> thank, thank that we have a pro here. Like, actually, we <sighs> thought maybe go without a host, and I'm quite happy because Tim is really saving us here with the technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back <laughs> okay, to dimension. Me, yeah. So I have this blue pattern. I can just, oh no. Where do, I, where do we want me to move it? The blue one? Uh, on the belly on the belly but didn't we just have the day okay i just yeah, have to convert this to a standard model hang on object yeah, right. convert to standard model here we go but you can still drag it and don't lose the ah oh, it's still white oh yeah, no no so. no it's okay fill c move it it looks cute but if it's see-through you can see the denim underneath it but it's fine it still looks cool ah. I can, oh, I can remove yeah. the denim. I can. But you won't see it because it's covered by the image. Oh, it's a transparent PNG. That's oh, okay. All right. But it, it, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. I, I will do this. The... Nope, nope, nope. Not. I will do this right. I will make this work. Okay. <laughs> I am a pro. Here we go. Yeah. Nadine, let's try that one more time. Let's mm -hmm. get rid and of this one. And there we go. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. But maybe from, from the denim, if you go, maybe we take another material, which is a bit more light, actually, because I think. Okay. Yeah. I think. Um, Whatever you want. Materials, maybe, yeah, a white plastic, something like this. White plastic. Uh, or maybe, maybe even gold. Even gold. Is... Why not? Let's use. Uh... Perfect. I mean, this right. is the best graphic I've ever seen in my entire life. And of course, <laughs> if I did a better job at exporting this, this would also be seamless and we wouldn't have this seam. So let's just move, yeah, look at it from the other like, side where we don't have a seam. <laughs> better. And uh, maybe uh, uh, add, okay. we add the face and then we bring it to Mixamo. So. Okay, let's add the face. I just Oh, you sent me the face as well. Okay, I can save that too. And of, I'm doing this off screen, just FYI, I just have to save, yeah. because obviously I can't show you my Adobe emails, so that wouldn't be too nice. Uh, Nadine face, okay. Here we go, download, download, download. And I just, as a 3D print. Oh, I have to save it as a center model. And yes. uh, to turn it, otherwise the face is on the back side, yeah. Yeah, 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 I wanted to hide the seam here, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, that was easy. Yay! Woo, 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 woo. Okay, awesome. And it's crazy how with the face it's already a character, so I think right? it's super nice. Even my crappy <laughs> design. It looks work. cool. Eh? It's a character. Oh. It looks a bit like Rick and Morty. Okay. Maybe we give it uh, arms. So we go to the objects and just give it two arms because I am a bit scared that it's um, too skinny like this. So we should add maybe. Maybe one of the boulder just as fists. Oh, we um, want to give it to hands. Okay. Um, yeah. How about, just have to move that a bit over. How about this one? Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Or oh, even better, you know, I have an idea. Crystal, because this already has like a... A shape like that, yeah. Okay. 
For the figure I was showing you, I chose the star as hands, so even that is working. So you can really choose abstract forms. Um, okay. Let's scale that one down just a bit, and let's actually move it just on the hand here. Mm -hmm. And da da da, like this, and like oh no, almost. Oh god. Okay, that's why I'm not a 3D artist, you know. But okay. also it should be more massive and huge. Even bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, how kind of that? like Hulk arms. <laughs> Hulk arm. Uh, okay. I just thought like we could have some like this, you know. It's a bit timid, but yeah, everyone like he wants. So. <laughs> every <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> okay. For the sensitives among us. Yeah, we go. Good Tim surrender to the art director. <laughs> Good enough. Okay. And, and also red, please. Also, okay, of course. Uh, but you can also use the eyedropper tool to actually put uh, material. Yeah, true. There. Um, so you can speed up your progress. Ooh, also nice. Yeah. Right. Um, I hope he will recognize those as hands because they look a bit. <laughs> well, we are about to find out. We will find out, yeah. Okay, and maybe, all right. Maybe we have to blow up the arms a little bit to make it a bit thicker. Um, Even thicker, oh, okay. Maybe uh, you can select both arms, so we save some time. Yeah, okay. And then you have to kind of uh, break the chain in the, in the sizing. And yeah, I can just can... do this, like this. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I think like, like this could be cool. Okay. And uh, maybe we can put his hair straight and then uh, <laughs> send him oh, to Okay, okay. <laughs> I see how it is. Yeah, okay. So if you select all, um, you can export it. Perfect. Yeah, you all can right. export him. And I mean, it's a full character 3D without any 3D so um, like this, modeling. Models? Okay. Yeah, selected models um, as GLTF would GLTF. be awesome. Okay. Yeah, and then we export that. And uh, I can export. All right. Okay. I now you have can a... also send, send it to arrow directly. Then you have the figure in arrow, which is also nice. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. Okay. So now the, the, what, we, what, do we, what do we do now? Uh, we will export it for arrow too, to sh also okay. show the static person. Export for arrow. Right. See your models in the real world. Yes. Thank you. Processing. Sometimes it's too big at this point, but it might be okay with this one since we used uh, very we low go. poly. Export. Uh, efforts, yes. Export. Perfect. Uh, let's just yeah. quickly send that to my desktop. And let's call it. And exporting. Yeah. And in the meantime, we can head over to Mixamo. Okay. Uh, so that you can actually see it. And Heading over the... to Mixamo. That's browser fast. break. Cool. So you just put in Mixamo in your browser and yep. uh, log in with your Adobe account. And here you see a selection of preset rigged animations but also characters and postures so you can even find like still postures to um, use on your character and then we have this magic button upload character uh, which you can choose uh-huh oh okay yeah and then you can put your character there usually i go to blender and export it as fbx to put it there but we can try with gltf or obj i think uh the export for arrow should be an uh, OBJ file. Mm, I have a bin, a GLTF, a GLB, but I don't think I have an OBJ. Uh, then maybe we have to export it as OBJ, actually. Okay. Export, select models as OBJ. Yeah. You know, yeah. do you know why I don't have an OBJ? Because I didn't export it as OBJ. Yeah, no, crazy. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Export, <laughs> please. I would recommend FBX actually, but this is not possible <laughs> in Dimension yet. You're killing me. But we, we will try uh, to do it. Oh with OBJ no! As well. Okay, OBJ. Here we go. Uploading. Do, do, with do. OBJ, sometimes it's losing the materials, but we can still take a look at the function now. Well, given that I'm doing this impromptu right now, yeah, I think um, <laughs> and for the first time. for the for the moment it's gonna be fine. All right, processing yeah. character. Just a moment. Okay. 
Your character is processing. This will take. Oh, there you go. Yep, the materials yeah, are missing. Should we try it with um, FBX once one more time? I think we. Are, I mean, we do have the yeah. time. It's we are over the time already, but we have like ten minutes left. So I why think not? It as FBX. Oh, you can't. Oh, that's too bad. No. All right. That's why you have to do that oh, okay. in Blender, um, which is an easy task to do in Blender. But I think okay. it's complex for now. So let's maybe move on with the white persona still. All right. So let's, and I have to reapply because I close it already. I have to reupload. That's okay. Yeah. And sometimes it takes really long if it's importing all the materials. So um, take some time in here. And maybe that was why everything was crashing. Mm. Untitled folder, Gareth. Yes, I know. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a very entertaining life right now because everything's <laughs> quite unpredictable. So now you switch uh, actually the left to right button cursor. Yeah, perfect. And then you go to further next. And then you have to uh, claim your skeleton. And I would uh, turn off um, mirroring effect downstairs. There is a small mm -hmm. check. We uncheck this. Uh, and then you can place it uh, where it says left and right, going uh, and chin, knees, and so on. Elbows. I don't think this character has elbows, but we, we will try anyway. I mean, the more experimental you are, the more tricky it mm -hmm. might be. Be, but actually you have it uh on the you have to turn it actually it's the back side right you can see it on the feet oh yeah you're right okay hang on no that's not it no not this either this one yeah. yes oh yes there you go right, let's try that one more oh you have symmetry no don't want that yeah, because uh, we didn't build symmetrical chin, elbows close enough knees yes and yeah. There we go. And All next. right. Okay. Uh, scan the uh, skeleton. Yes, sir. You can have no, no fingers. fingers. Yeah, but it doesn't make a big difference. And then oh, you go okay. to next, and then it's trying to apply the skeleton. Sometimes you have to work on your model if it's too weird, <laughs> but it's actually recognizing a lot. So we hope that we can bring it to life. Do, 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 do. Oh, kind of auto like rigger will take up to two minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's why I did that before, but I think this was really like a... Wow, please saving. Saving. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the chat. Um, very enjoyable, yes. <laughs> Even though we planned none of this, um, it still works. And that just goes, how to, goes to show how easy, honestly, apart from my questionable artistic skills, how easy it can be for you to get started right away. You saw I did this in... How much time? Like 10 minutes? Ten. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it looked quite cool, no? So. Uh, um, uh, well, we, uh, we, we, we I, I'm okay, maybe. <laughs> I'd have I to talk about cool. that if it looks cool. I uh, love it. <laughs> I, I mean, I honestly, the one that doesn't make you print <laughs> or on a t shirt. Oh, here we and go. Actually, with Mixamo, the nice thing is that you can also have um, like standing posture. So uh -huh. instead of re uh, rigging or re changing everything, you can <gasps> give it. Look at that. There it is. Oh, that and is now really it looked exciting. Before, but it looked, now it looks awesome. So we go to next. Uh huh. And now do the Macarena. There it is. And it can play everything. And then you can download it or export it to Arrow with the button directly and just play it in Arrow. Give it the animation. I think it's quite awesome. <laughs> this is... Uh, oh, okay. Overdrive. Yes, please. Overdrive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Shake it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, the funny thing is it looks super <laughs> stiff when you build it with starter assets in Dimension. But as soon as, as you give it uh, motion and Mixamo, it really becomes a uh, kind of a living creature. So it's uh, super cool, actually. And yeah, you can choose also different movements as a package or to play them in a row. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having, I'm having too much fun with this. <laughs> it's and really now, hard. Not to now imagine how much yeah. cooler it would be if you had like the uh, right texture on Ten that. minutes more. <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes more. I mean, yeah. With, with FBX, uh, it's packing you the materials to it. But this is what I meant, meant with postures. For uh, example, you can okay. also download that, throw it back into Dimension, give it the textures, oh. um, and you can give it all the movements if you want to save time and you don't want to relocate everything. And um, I can send it directly to Arrow too. Oh, that's great. Yeah. All yeah. right. Maybe we try that if you click uh, Send to Arrow. Sure. 
Send to article characters to review. Yes, please. But we should also export it because then I can show you the skins. But maybe that's too much. Too much I don't think now. we have the time for that, unfortunately. Yeah. And we, I don't... We try it. Oh, assets saved to Creative Cloud files. Well, that's yeah. that's cool. All right. Okay. Of course, I don't have the space to show this asset off, but I, we have the second best thing to that because since we're already at time, I can go back to this scene and I can show you once again the QR code that uh, Nadine had. Sorry. Is it from off? Yes. Ah, yeah, then it's working. Yeah, okay. So we did have this QR code, which I can just briefly, there we go. So um, if you want to try it out on your own, of course, I can't share the file I just created with you. Although you can probably create it on your own time since it wasn't too difficult. But um, if you take your phone and scan this code now, as promised at the end of the stream, uh, you should hopefully get a really fun scene that Nadine has prepared earlier and that you can try out right now. It's a small lockdown disco, <sighs> so you can have some party at home. Okay. It pays off to dance off the technical issues of All conference. Right. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Tim. You really saved everything. It's like <laughs> If I knew that wow. before, we, I would have started my uh, screen share much earlier and we would have a bit more time, but that's okay. Yeah. My hair is evenly is just as excited as I am. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> You're a 3D creator now. Eh? Yeah. Like oh, yes. I can put that on my business my card. <laughs> I'm a 3D creator now. Don't add me. <laughs> All right. Okay. So thanks so much for joining us as always. Unfortunately, this is the end of the stream we're out of time so sad about that i wanted i really wanted to play with more textures and more characters in uh, mixamo and have a bit more fun than that but i will leave that to you the viewer at home as a homework give it a try play around you saw how easy it is and if i can find the keynote from off with nadine uh, if i can find it i will make sure to post that too the discord because as always if you're not part of the discord yet do make sure to come on over to the discord that i have put the link into here and you can find the link also below every adobe live stream in the video description so come on over have a jump into there it's really fun and it's also your place to submit your work to us because on friday this friday we do have a special stream prepared with our two friends of two illustrators rachel presky and hazel mead they will take your photos yes your photos at home and they will augment them not with 3d assets but with 2d assets because they will illustrate on top of them so do make sure to post your photos deadline is tomorrow evening uk time so post your work and with a bit of luck they will appear on the stream and uh, our illustrators will illustrate over them and hopefully it should be really fun and with that i would like to thank nadine and susie for joining us today unfortunately some technical difficulties but that makes it just even more fun that's how people know it's live and also i want to thank everyone who tuned in to the chat today um like Andreas and Andrew and Alex and Angus and Annika and Carol and Kathy and Connor and David and Dung and Emma and Fabio and Fahad and Floyd and Gareth and Helmut and Ingi. And okay, we'll stop now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this today. And um, Nadine, Susie, any last any last words before we say goodbye? Uh, next time with double Wi-Fi, uh, <laughs> we will rock it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I double that. <laughs> yes, with solid connection. We will just all come over, come on over to your house and just watch over your shoulder because that's not creepy at all. <laughs> all right. So with that, I invite everybody at home to try out the apps. Give it a try. And we will see you on Friday with Rachel and Hazel. Illustrations, augmentations, and do make sure to submit your photos. So thank you so much. And... We'll see you soon, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.